The Myall Creek Massacre near Gwydar River, in the central New South Wales district of Namay, involved the brutal killing of 28 unarmed Indigenous Australians by 11 white men on 10 June 1838, at the Myall Creek near Bingara, Murchison County, in northern New South Wales. After two trials, seven of the 11 white men were found guilty of murder and hanged. A group of 11 stockmen, consisting of assigned convicts and former convicts, led by John Henry Fleming, who was from Munji Bundi Run near Moree, arrived at Henry Dangar's Myall Creek Station in New England on June 9, 1838. They rode up to the station huts beside which were camped a group of approximately 35 Aboriginal people. They were part of the Wiraere group who belonged to the Kamalaroi people. They had been camped at the station for a few weeks after being invited by one of the convict stockmen, Charles Kilmeister, to come to their station for their safety and protection from the gangs of marauding stockmen who were roaming the district slaughtering any Aboriginal people they could find. These Aboriginal people had previously been camped peacefully at McIntyre's station for a few months. They were therefore well known to the whites. Most of them had been given European names such as Daddy, King Sandy, Joey, Martha, and Charlie. Some of the children spoke a certain amount of English. When the stockmen rode into their camp they fled into the convict's hut pleading for protection. When asked by the station hut keeper, George Anderson, what they were going to do with the Aboriginal people, John Russell said they were going to take them over the back of the range and frighten them. The stockmen then entered the hut, tied them to a long tether rope and led them away. They took them to a gully on the side of the ridge about 800 meters to the west of the station huts. There they slaughtered them all except for one woman who they kept with them for the next couple of days. The approximately 28 aboriginals they murdered were largely women, children, and old men. Ten younger men were away on a neighboring station cutting bark. Most of the aboriginals were slaughtered with swords as George Anderson, who refused to join the massacre, clearly heard there were just two shots. Unlike Anderson, Charles Kilmeister joined the slaughter. Testimony was later given at trial that the children had been beheaded while the men and women were forced to run as far as they could between the stockyard fence and a line of sword-wielding stockmen who hacked at them as they passed. After the massacre, Fleming and his gang rode off looking to kill the remainder of the group, who they knew had gone to the neighboring station. They failed to find the other Aboriginal people as they had returned to Myall that night and left after being warned the killers would be returning. On the party's return to Myall two days later, they dismembered and burnt the bodies before resuming the search for the remaining Aboriginals. The ten remaining Aboriginals had gone to McIntyre's station near Inverell, 40 kilometers to the east, where between 30 and 40 Aboriginal people were reportedly murdered with their bodies being cast onto a large fire. Many suspect this massacre was also committed by the same stockmen. After several days of heavy drinking the party dispersed. When the manager of the station, William Hobbs, returned several days later and discovered the bodies, counting up to 28 of them, as they were beheaded and dismembered he had difficulty determining the exact number, he decided to report the incident but Kilmeister initially talked him out of it. Hobbs discussed it with a neighboring station overseer, Thomas Foster, who told squatter Frederick Foote who rode to Sydney to report it to the new governor, George Gipps. Supported by the Attorney General, John Plunkett, Gipps ordered police magistrate Edward Denny Day at Musewellbrook to investigate the massacre. They carried out a thorough investigation despite the bodies having been removed from the massacre site where only a few bone fragments remained. He arrested 11 of the 12 perpetrators. The only one to escape was the only free man involved, the leader, John Fleming. Anderson was crucial in identifying the arrested men. He had initially refused to name the men involved but after finding out that the massacre had been planned more than a week earlier to coincide with the absence of Hobbs he agreed to identify the killers to the magistrate.